right? If you would just live in the suburbs, it would have been better. What we don't want to do is we don't want to think that, and we don't want to address the obvious. And what's the obvious? The obvious is the more money you have, the better education you have, and the better opportunity you have. The less money you have, the less educational opportunities you have. There's a remedy for that, but we don't want to accept that remedy because we assume that that remedy is socialist and inherently unfair and blah, blah, blah. Right? Um, so what ends up happening is in cases of direct violence, it's, it's, it's reprehensible. But structural violence has become normalized, right? Normativized. We accept the death of the bum. Nobody cares about the bum's death. That's why we have bumfights.com. We're entertained by the bum's death in some senses, in some very, very perverse sense, right? Um, nobody cares about the young inner city person who dies or the rural agrarian person who, who starves to death because they can't, you know, they can't drive to the city and support themselves. Nobody cares about that. We don't. And the reason that we don't is we think that their death is a consequence of their inability to provide for themselves. So, with respect to uh, with respect to structural violence, then uh, I want to read what Galtung says. In a discussion of structural violence, there's three tenets: direct violence, structural violence, but also cultural violence. And this is what he has to say. He says the category of structural violence, and I'll actually draw this. Actually, I won't draw it because it's already here. Right? I've already written it. But the category of structural violence should make such cultural violence transparent. However, the violence strata image does not, so violence is understood like this, violence is understood like this, right? The, the violence strata image does not define the only causal chain in the violence triangle. There are linkages and causal flows in all six directions, and this is my attempt to, to formulate a better way of describing and analyzing this. Um, and, cycles, and cycles connecting all three may start at any point. So cultural, and viol cultural violence influences structural violence, which influences direct, or cultural influences direct, and then structural, and so on. Right? There's any combination, and that's what these arrows are attempting to, 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 to demonstrate. This is a good reason why the triangle may sometimes be better imaged than the um, three-tiered stratum model. So this is not a good enough model. According to Galton, this is a better model. Right? Um, right? This is a better model than this. Because we recognize that um, this form of violence manifests in the relationship in any direction. Structural to cultural, cultural to direct, direct to cultural, cultural to structural, and so on. So here's the example. And I think this is an amazing uh, example. Africans are captured, forced across, this is a quote, again, from, uh, from Galton. Um, Africans are captured, forced across the Atlantic to work as slaves. Millions are killed in the process, in Africa on board in the Americas. This massive direct violence, obviously, their obvious death, this massive direct violence over centuries seeps down and sed um, sediments as massive structural violence. The fact that all of these people died leads to structural violence in actually two senses, on the continent of Africa and in the United States of America. On the continent of Africa, there has been this huge loss, and now we have to sort of reconstruct those remaining survivors, have to reconstruct identity and national nationality post-slavery. The individuals who have been brought over now need to be oppressed, right, caged psychologically, um, so that they can be controlled. The system of controlling them is structural violence. Um, this massive direct violence over centuries seeps down in sediments as massive structural violence, with whites as the masters, top dogs, and blacks as the slaves, underdogs, producing and reproducing massive cultural violence, with racist ideas everywhere. After some time, direct violence is forgotten, slavery is forgotten, right? You don't remember slavery, you don't remember the direct violence, it's, it's forgotten. And only two labels show up, pale enough in college textbooks, and these terms are discrimination, for massive structural violence and prejudice for massive cultural violence. And what Galton says, and I think he's absolutely right in this, is the sanitized language of discrimination and prejudice is itself an aspect of cultural violence. Because what, it, what is actually happening in this triangle, right, in this triangle of violence between direct violence and structural violence, which we know now, and those two and cultural violence is that culturally, we want to, as we said, move beyond, 
right? We want to move beyond our past. But as we've seen in previous lectures um, with respect to uh, revisionist, revisionist histories, you have to be careful in how that history is revised. Historically speaking, that narrative, the shared narrative of the population, needs to come as a consequence of both orthodoxy and heterodoxy. If it's only the orthodoxy, that, and I said this before, um, if it's only the orthodoxy that is contributing to the historical narrative of a people, then it's only going to further oppress those who are already oppressed. So what ends up happening is that there has to be shared, there has to be a shared um, ability to recognize the past. And as a last conclusion, some examples of structural violence, um, as we said, underemployment is an example, starvation, military occupation, sexism, racism, ageism, pollution, environmental degradation, medical inaccessibility. All of these forms, um, all of these serve as um, instantiations of structural violence. So with respect to an understanding of structural violence, it's important as theorists, as potential educators, as potential peacekeepers, that we, um, we recognize that death doesn't only come at the barrel of the gun. Death also comes, and I would argue more so comes, on a much, much larger scale, by the deprivation, either absolute or relative deprivations, which I'll talk about later, um, by the deprivations that the structure, that the system imposes on, um, on those who have been disenfranchised by power. Um, and uh, in this idea, and in this lecture, and in this, the, 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 the series on um, alternative theories, not really alternative, but just more sort of postmodern, postcolonial theories, it's important to recognize the role that deprivation plays in um, oppression and suppression. So with that being said, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this installment on structural violence. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Have a good day.